Welcome back friends. If you are starting or growing a nonprofit organization, how do you know if you're genuinely making an impact? How do you measure your success and progress towards growing efficiently and meeting your mission? In this video, I'm going to talk through 14 different metrics you want to consider measuring and evaluating in order to know if you're making an impact, operating efficiently and generating revenue in an effective way. Measuring your success through all these tracking mechanisms can help you see that you're making an impact, but it can also give you the data you need to pivot if you see something not working so well. So let's get into it. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Amber Melanie Smith. I'm a nonprofit founder and executive director and social entrepreneur. I make these videos here on YouTube to help people who want to make an impact, whether that's through starting and growing a nonprofit organization, fundraising for causes you care about, starting a socially conscious business and more. I hope that you find that this video is helpful to you. As always, I have a newsletter that I leave the link to subscribe to below this video where I share tips and strategies strategies and funding opportunities. So you can subscribe to that to get some different content from me if that's something that would be helpful to you. I also have over 200 videos on these topics, so have a look around and see what might be valuable to you. There really are a lot of indicators to let you know you're on the right track as you're growing and scaling a nonprofit and its impact. We're going to look at several of them and they're going to take a look at things like the efficiency and effectiveness of your organization from a lot of different angles, financial, um, from a programmatic standpoint, your mission impacts, your governance and your leadership and your growth and sustainability as an organization. The first umbrella of metrics we're going to talk about are your financial health metrics. And there are four in this umbrella that we're going to cover. The first one is the diversity of your fundraising and funding sources. So nonprofits can generate revenue from a lot of different mechanisms, individual donations, grants, events, sponsorships, earned income and program fees, all of these things are possible. And in order to make sure that you can uh, stay strong in the event that one of your funding sources um, takes a dive or something, you wanna have other funding sources that you can rely on. So a good metric might be, do you have um, three to four different revenue streams or funding sources for your organization? Um, do you have, uh, you know, is, do you not receive more than half of your total revenue in a year from a single source or single type of funding? This kind of thing is what I would take a look at to see if you have a good diversity of funding sources. The second metric you might want to take a look at is your fundraising efficiency. And this is basically how much it costs your organization to raise money. Uh, you've heard the expression, probably it takes money to make money. That applies to nonprofits too. You might need to invest in marketing materials or fundraising person or grant writer or you know any of these things might be investments you might make in order to generate money that would be a good return on investment. So how you might phrase this is, it costs us 12 cents to raise $1. So that's your fundraising efficiency ratio. Now, this one's a little tricky because there are some uh, guidelines out there about what might be considered a good fundraising efficiency, but I want to clarify that it really depends on the size and the age of your organization, how sophisticated your fundraising infrastructure already is. If you are just starting out, you've got a newer organization, or you're just now as an organization starting to invest in your long-term fundraising strategy, your ratio might not look as good as some of those others because you have to make some upfront investment <clears throat> in order to build the systems that get you to that point of efficiency later. So don't be too hard on yourself if your fundraising efficiency isn't in where you want it to be just yet. Just make sure that you are taking a look at what smart investments you can make that are going to be likely to result in more efficiency down the line. That's the ultimate goal. The third metric is donor retention rates. 
I've heard this said in sales, it is the same in nonprofits. It is cheaper to keep a customer than it is to acquire a new customer. So just replace the word customer now with donor. It is cheaper to keep a donor than to acquire a new donor. Um, so a great way of measuring this would be how many of your donors are donating every year for multiple years in a row. Something like 75% uh, of our donors are donating three plus years in a row. That would be a, a great retention uh, metric. So taking a look at that, and if you find that your donor retention numbers are low, really analyzing that and thinking about how are we engaging our donors throughout the year? Are we keeping them informed of our impacts? Are we inviting them to events and activities at which we don't ask them for money all the time? It's really important not to treat donors like an ATM and to instead cultivate a friendship and a relationship with them that is ongoing. That is a key to increasing that donor retention rate. And the fourth metric of financial help I'm gonna talk about is reserve funds or operating reserves. This is basically how much do you have in your nonprofit savings account, right? So um, it's a good idea to have a couple, you know, a couple of months of operating costs in your operating reserve or your reserve account um, at any given time in case of emergency, in case some of your funding sources dry up. So if you don't already have this, thinking through a strategy to start putting a little bit of money away each month or each year into your operating reserve would be a good practice. Something like we have three months of operating costs in our reserve fund. If you are wondering, how are you gonna keep track of all of these metrics that you're talking about, Amber? I would like to offer up a tool for you and it's the sponsor of this video, Argenta Software. Not only does Argenta give you the mechanisms to input the data to keep track of all these metrics, but it also has a reporting feature where you can just generate a report to see how you're doing in any one of these areas that we've been talking about. I know when I was first starting out as a nonprofit, I had ambitions of tracking all of these things, but it's really hard to do that without the software and the mechanisms in place. So I really would have benefited from a solution like Argento way back in the day. And another thing is, Oftentimes in nonprofits, we feel like we have to invest in multiple types of software in order to track these things, but Argenta really is an all-in-one solution that has the capacity to do everything from managing your donors, to your accounting, to your project management, to your board engagement. All of this stuff is kind of rolled into one software solution. And you can even use their forms feature to collect external donations from the public and embed that form into your site. So it feeds right into that donor system too. And you're tracking in your metrics evaluation. Uh, it's really easy to subscribe and get started with Argenta. You can get a demo, you can reach out and talk to the team over there. They're very, very nice people. Um, or you know, start your account and, and check things out. So I highly recommend that you check them out. And as you're exploring new potential donor audiences and fundraising mechanisms to include in your fundraising strategy, Argenta really can help you with all of those fundraising and financial management pieces too. Like I said, from fundraising events to tracking sponsorships to creating a grants calendar, your donor tracking, all of that good stuff is in there. I'm gonna leave the link to learn more about Argenta below this video. Check them out. Like I said, feel free to reach out to their team if you have any questions. They're very, very nice people. And I hope that you find some help in their awesome solution. The second umbrella of metrics we're gonna talk about are your program metrics. And you can think of these as how you're measuring the impact you're making on the community that you're serving. There are four metrics that I'm gonna talk about in this section. The first is outcomes measurement. And outcomes should not be confused with outputs. Outputs is like the deliverables you're producing, like the number of meals served or something like that. Outcomes, on the other hand, is how a change has occurred as a result of your organization's intervention or mission activities, right? So um, something like 80% uh, of the people we serve uh, find affordable housing within one year. That's an outcome. That person's life has changed because in a year they have found affordable housing. Um, so that's different. And, and it's important to measure this because ultimately we're here to change our communities for the better. And you know, a metric like meals served 
might tell you how many people got to eat that day, but it's not gonna tell you the long-term changes that your organization made by its existence and its work. So outcomes measurement is very important, especially to funders. The second program metric here is beneficiary satisfaction. And that is basically what it sounds like. Are the people that you're serving happy and uh, helped and supported by your services. This is different from outcomes measurement because in this case, you're literally asking your beneficiaries how they're feeling about your services to them. And it's important to make sure that your beneficiaries, the people you're helping and serving, they are satisfied because ultimately they're your top customer as a nonprofit organization. So an example of how you might phrase this might be something like 90% of the people we serve were reported with our affordable housing services last year. And you would typically get this information by doing interviews or surveys or focus groups. The third metric is program reach. And this is now more similar to the outputs thing that I said before. So this is how many people or communities have you served? What is the reach of your programs? Uh, a possible way you would phrase this is last year we served 500 people, a 25% increase from the year before. So that's a, a great way of explaining it actually, because not only are you showing the reach, but you're showing how the reach has changed over time. Fourth on this list is stakeholder engagement. Stakeholders are anyone who's impacted by your programming. That could be your, your clients, the people you're serving. It could also be your donors. It could even be your board members. It could even be your own staff. Anyone impacted or affected by your work in some way is a potential stakeholder for your organization. So engagement is important because the better the engagement with your stakeholders, the more likely you are to get volunteers and donations and support on things you might need advocacy for. So stakeholder engagement is a great method metric to pair with your other program metrics. Um, something like uh, over half of our donors attend our annual meeting um, where we share our impacts. That might be a good uh, example of stakeholder engagement measuring. The third umbrella here is governance, staffing, and leadership. And I'm lumping three different metrics under this one, um, but these are pretty important because these are the people running the organization. The first in this category is board engagement. Similar to stakeholder engagement, as I mentioned previously, your board has got to be engaged in your organization's operations and governance. And that could look like a lot of things, but it is very important specifically for your board to be involved in board meetings and discussions. That's where they are making sure that they can be making informed decisions about the organization. The board should be engaged in the fundraising for the organization, so that's important too. And ideally, you want your board to feel really satisfied with their participation because board members are also donors and they need to be really well informed about the mission and the issues impacting the organization. These are the folks that are voting on the organization's budget each year. So you really want all of them to be really engaged and informed on everything going on so that they can make accurate decisions. So a potential metric here might be every single board member has participated in our fundraising activities in some way in the last year. The second metric here relates to employee retention and satisfaction. Employee turnover can be very costly for a nonprofit. It costs a lot to recruit a new person, to train a new person. You might lose institutional knowledge. All of that stuff is not helpful for your mission as an organization. So the happier and engaged your staff is, the better. So metrics around this uh, topic might be things like employee satisfaction with their compensation, with their work-life balance. Um, so you might do a survey, for example, every year or every a couple times per year where you're asking your, your team um, how they're satisfied with all these various aspects of their work. And that will help you from a human resources perspective identify what areas you might want to strengthen in terms of the infrastructure for your staff. Like let's say everyone uh, in the survey is complaining that the benefits are really poor. Then you take that to your board and you say, hey, everyone is uh, really unsatisfied with our benefits. Maybe we can invest more in that for our budget next year. What do you say? So keeping an eye on those metrics is really important too. The third one under this category is uh, compliance with legal and ethical standards for nonprofits. Um, this one, 
you might benefit from having an external source sort of validate what you're doing. Uh, websites like Charity Navigator, GuideStar Candid, um, they have, uh, you know, seals of, of uh, compliance and um, like recognition seals on nonprofit web pages where uh, they've measured your compliance with ethical standards, with um, your compliance with legal standards for nonprofits, and they give you like a score, like you're a platinum level nonprofit or something. And this is helpful because it can build trust with your donors and supporters. They see you have a, a seal that says you're, you're really good at accountability and transparency as a nonprofit. That's gonna instill trust and encourage them to donate to you. The fourth and final category we're gonna cover in this video for metrics is growth and sustainability. This is really important, especially if you are a newer organization or one that is aspiring to make sure that you're sustainable for the long haul. And I'm gonna cover three different metrics under this umbrella. Metric number one is year over year growth. That's why tracking every year is important so you can kind of compare to past years. But growth can be defined in a lot of different ways. And I wanna say, it might seem like the ideal situation to always have a growing budget, but it is far more important that your mission is solid and that the number of people you're helping is uh, is what your community needs you to be doing. So mission first, money second. Um, you can measure year over year growth through the increase in the number of people or communities you're serving. You can measure it through financial growth, how much your budget has grown or, or different funding sources is growing over year to year. Um, all of these are possible, but year over year growth obviously is a good portrayal of how you are growing. Second is long-term goals. And if you're achieving them, it's important as an organization to know your tactical day-to-day -day stuff, your, your short-term goals, but you've got to have your eye on a long-term big goal as well. Um, something like, I don't know, you need to have a building in order to serve three times the number of people you can serve today. Or um, you would like to have uh, a policy or law passed in your community that would um, greatly reduce poverty or something like that. So a big goal that your organization is working towards that's on the horizon for you. And the achievement of such a goal is a great indicator of your growth and sustainability. An example might be you finally were able to purchase that building after, after years of raising money for it. And the third one, and probably my favorite one, is long-term community impact. What is different about the community you live in 10, 20, 50, 100 years later because your nonprofit existed? That might not be true otherwise. For example, uh, the percent of people experiencing homelessness in our city has decreased by 40% over the past 10 years because of our efforts. That's really powerful. That makes me want to donate. So knowing those long-term impacts and you know how your organization's work and existence has changed the trajectory of the community you're operating in is a really powerful way to measure your growth and success. All of that said, you've got to choose the metrics that align best with your organization's mission and the current stage your organization is in. I'd love to hear from you. What are some other metrics that you think are important for your organization or what are some of your questions about some of the metrics that we talked about today? Feel free to leave those in the comments. I literally check my YouTube comments every day. I do my very best to answer all of the ones that I possibly can. And so um, that you won't be sending a comment or a question into a void. Um, I will do my best to answer it. Like I said before, I have resources for you. Check out my newsletter, the link is below. I have a website, foundertofulltime.com with some online courses and, and blog articles about the process of fundraising and starting a nonprofit. Those might be helpful to you. You can check those out. Like I said, foundertofulltime.com. And I also have an online community at, in, uh, on Facebook, Change the World or Bust. Uh, you can come join thousands of people from around the world doing their best to make an impact 
contact and share your story with us too. We'd love to have you over there. Once again, I'm Amber Melanie Smith and I'll see you next time. Bye.